Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome and thank you so much for joining me. If you're brand new here, my channel is just about what I'm working on, some things I'm good at. Mixed media is not one of the things I'm good at. I'm not an artist. I would say I don't paint pictures and I don't draw. But, you know, sometimes I mix it up. I had in my brain a page that had sheer chaos and kind of was like the world coming at you and dealing with it. And so that's what I'm making here. And I'll tell you not to like disparage or say bad things, but just to learn from. I wish I would have done the red and the blue and the black separately so that they hadn't blended at all so that I would have gotten more intense colors. But that's okay. I learned from it. Then I brought in the tissue, and if you watch my channel, you know that I like blue. So all of this other color is sheer chaos to me. If these are your favorite colors, then you won't find this shocking. Then I grabbed my favorite yellow 99 cent paint that I got. It's really nice paint, but I got it at a thrift store and a stencil. The book is not down flat, so if I was on a flat piece of paper, that paint might have worked fine with the stencil, but it left a really messy look. I'm okay with that. I don't mind that it bled under the stencil. I don't use pixie spray or anything like that. If that matters to you, then be more careful, slow down, use some spray, work flat, whatever. Then I wanted more bright colors. I know, if, you're, if you watch my channel a lot, you're like, what? I got out the green Dilutions paint and I had to stir it up a little. And then I just filled in some of the white spaces and I had to resist every fiber in my body not to fill in every single white space. And white isn't bad. It gives your project some interest, some contrast, something else going on. I mean, I barely left any, but I want you to know that I really, really tried. I worked at it. I had an idea of where this is going. I have this tiny cat that purrs like a Mack truck. When she purrs, all is well in the world. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's sheer chaos. It doesn't matter what's going on. So I took a piece of cardstock and tried to draw, draw a cat. And I will tell you, I had two pieces of cardstock. So the first one I drew a couple. And then this was like my third one. And I was like, okay, I can work with this one. And I used photos of her. I was sitting next to her, but she just had her face down and then she's just all black. So I used photos and I was going to show you the photo that I used, but I think what I did was I used more than one, which is really hard if you're learning because the angle of her head was different. So what I did was I went and sat in bed, had a clipboard, drew this. So it's late at night. And then I decided I'm going to slap a bunch of black paint on it because I want it to dry. Part of the reason I do voiceovers on my art journal videos is because I stop and go. I slap something on, then I walk away. And that's why I do those fade in and fade, fade outs. This is late at night, I'm just slapping a bunch of black paint on it, and then I'm gonna go to bed and let it dry. And I, at this point, don't have any experience or plan, and then I remember I have a black paint marker. I have some of these from old projects. These are probably 10 years old by now, maybe, unless somebody gave me newer ones. And this is like um, just a basic black one. I didn't even see on it where it said it's an Elmer's painter's pen. I didn't see like if it was opaque or if it was going to be matte or what. Turns out it's a little shiny. I wasn't expecting that and I don't know if I would have dabbed it all over the way I did, but that's okay. You'll see it at the end. I managed to get green paint on it. Somehow it must have been at night when I brought it out from the bedroom and the green paint was still wet. So then I thought about it and I probably could have used my sand eraser to get some of that off, but then I just realized I can cover that with gesso. So I'm just coloring it in and trying to add a bit of texture. She is the sweetest, tiniest little cat. She has kind of an allergy problem, so she doesn't always have a smooth, beautiful coat. It kind of comes and goes and depending on maybe the season or what I feed her, I don't know. We've never figured it out, and she's had it since she was little itty-bitty. 
so I'm just like filling it in and seriously never never drawn a cat I think I did some kind of mock-up of this page once but drawing a cat was a real challenge for me and I think I will do it again and part of the challenge is drawing human faces we look more similar there are more ratios that sort of thing this cat has like an ovalish face a sideways oval my other cat has like a triangle face like a cobra this one has a oval face with a cute little pointy chin on it it's pretty funny I don't know that I got the width of her face quite right I'm putting it on top and as you watch this you're going to be shocked at my color choice but I'll tell you why this cat her name is Sadie I call her the tiny cat she is my favorite. Don't tell Wilson. She has this personality. Like, I'm not an artist, right? I can't necessarily capture expression. But this bored blank expression is pretty much her. She allows us all to live here. She doesn't like Wilson. She's bloodied him. She doesn't like the other cat. She couldn't care less about Pooh when Pooh was still here. I nicknamed her the Princess Kitty because she kind of has this like standoffish, you will do what I need personality, but then she purrs like a Mack truck and brings joy in. My house sitter, without even knowing that, nicknamed her Prom Queen because she just has that kind of personality. So she always looks bored as though you're not entertaining enough. Because I call her the Princess Kitty, I was looking for the perfect pink. So I got out some tissue. It was too bright. It wasn't right. Then I got out some ribbon. It was closer to the color, but I wasn't sure how I was going to use it. And that pink Dilutions paint was way too bright. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. I have white paint. But I was too lazy to look for it, so I used the gesso. So I just put water from my drink bottle into a little pie thing and gesso and some pink paint. And oh, a little more gesso, maybe a little more water, and stirred it up. And it was very watery, right? Because I watered it down so much. So then I just decided to pour it on there. From the beginning, I had this idea of like her with this pink girly background, just completely disregarding the rest of the world because that's what she does. That is what I came up with and why this page looks like that. I don't know if I really captured what I was trying to but I think it's pretty close I'm zooming in here it's still wet so you can't really tell texture and how it's going to dry in the long run but it gives you an idea so you get a glimpse of that then this is funny I mean I must have stopped and started a million times I took that picture down the hall held it up next to Sadie and her eyes were more green so I went over it again with green then I was still trying to figure out what I was going to do with her ears because she's an allergy girl. Her ears are kind of weird and her head is actually super bald by her ears. It's just not very attractive, so I didn't want to put that in there. <laughs> but her ears aren't light colored like that. But I was trying to get that dimension and not make it look so much like a flat triangle. Then I went and found pink gel pens which are actually nonies that's a long story but so they're here and I got pink gel pens I wrote all is well when the tiny cat purrs and I wrote it on black cardstock I thought that the pink gel pen would pop a little better I was using both counters while I was filming that wasn't very wise I experimented a little with different gel pens and a glitter pen and just kind of had a little bit of fun doing it when you're art journaling you are you should be free and having fun and not worrying about if the line is perfectly straight. And I learned a ton about the different mediums and how they would lay together here and which ones were thick. And that's the first time that I think I ever made my own paint color using gesso. When I pushed on all as well, I pushed too hard. Part of using my three-in-one rubber cementy glue that I like is... You don't have to push things down flat. You can just kind of leave it. So when I put when the tiny cat purrs, I didn't push as hard, left some dimension. Then I'm just going back in and fixing the marks that I messed up with the gesso. Maybe I shouldn't have gone over them in the first place. I don't know. Then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, what are we going to do about those ears though? And see what I mean about the pen? The black paint that I used from a tube was matte and the pen was shiny. 
And I think that's okay. If it's that big of a deal, I could go back over it. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it just like this. Because the point was to get out the mixed media stuff and play. I did color in the ears, but I don't know where that is. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>